Welcome back to the sweat pit, my little droplets. LeBron James just signed on to star in Space Jam 2. And while the belated sequel is hotly anticipated by Hoops fans, it's not the kind of project that will help the King go deep into award season. If LeBron wants to win now, should he leave Space Jam for a movie with a better chance of taking home an Academy Award? I won't deny that Space Jam has potential, but we've already seen things go downhill when LeBron is surrounded by an unproven cast. Director Terrence Nance showed some promise in his college films, but he's never been at the helm of a major motion picture. And although Ryan Coogler is incredibly talented, let's be honest, the guy's never won at the highest level. If LeBron wants to hoist up an Oscar, he has to join a contender. Maybe a period piece depicting the struggles of African Americans during segregation, or if that doesn't seem like a good fit, he could always rely on mainstays like a strong Holocaust film or a World War II biopic. Our phone lines are already heating up with fans ready to criticize LeBron for cutting bait on yet another production team. But look, there's no loyalty in this game. LeBron isn't Superman, okay? If Michael Jordan couldn't win an Oscar for Space Jam, we shouldn't expect LeBron to pull off a miracle and win one all by himself either. He needs to go where's best for him, even if that means swallowing his pride and teaming up with Kobe Bryant. Might seem far-fetched, but Kobe knows what it takes to win an Oscar. And if he joins forces with King James, the two of them could dominate the best animated short category for years to come. At his age, I understand why LeBron would sign on to a big money project like Space Jam 2. But sooner or later, he'll be back chasing trophies. For the league's sake... Let's just hope that doesn't mean he'll take less money for a supporting role in a Golden State Warriors documentary. All right, coming up next, more NBA news. After a series of sexual misconduct violations, is it time for the Dallas Mavericks to cut ties with Mavs Man? Towel up, sweatheads. We're headed to the Meadowlands, where the New York Giants are already in shambles less than halfway through the season. Their defense can't generate pressure, their offense can't stop pressure, and they look even more dysfunctional than the team that finished 3-13 and last season. When you watch them throw away game after game, it makes you wonder if this current Giants team is a covert Al-Qaeda plot designed to hurt New Yorkers again. I mean, how else do you explain their moves this offseason? Only Eamon Al-Zawahiri could be behind the Giants' decision to draft a running back second overall, especially in this day and age. And for them to pass on taking their quarterback of the future, or even a lineman to protect Eli, there has got to be something more sinister at play here. Now, don't get me wrong, this sort of plot doesn't happen overnight. Al-Qaeda has been sowing their seeds of destruction ever since they were able to remove Tom Coughlin from power in 2015. But now that they've gained control of this Giants team, they are making their destructive presence known. And they're going to keep overpaying former Patriots like Nate Solder until New Yorkers have properly suffered. Their treatment of Odell Beckham Jr. this summer was nothing short of an act of subterfuge. You have the most recognizable athlete in the city in his prime, and you float him out on the trade block? Come on! This is an insurgency. And hell, with the way Eli Manning is dinking and dunking the ball, I'm not so sure he isn't part of a sleeper cell. I know Eli's won New York two championships, but hey, you know, Bin Laden used to be our ally too. All right, coming up after the break, they might be off to an undefeated start, but is Nick Saban's Alabama squad too distracted by this season to focus on next season's title? 